Hello, my name is uh, Jaap van Aar. I'm editor of uh, Rheumatology and uh, my guest today is uh, Professor uh, Fai Eng from Newcastle University, who is also uh, Chief Investigator of the uh, UK Primary Sjogren Syndrome uh, Registry. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Eng. Um, you have published a very uh, intriguing paper on the, you know, with results from this uh, registry. So tell, the, um, tell us a little bit about this uh, registry. What, what's the registry about? Yeah, so the aim of the UK Primary Sjogren's Syndrome Registry is really a well-characterised clinical cohort and a biobank. Um, to, in order for us to characterise a patient with primary Sjogren's Syndrome, because as you know, primary Sjogren's Syndrome is a chronic condition um, with a very variable um, clinical characteristic, both in terms of the clinical manifestation and the degree of symptoms and etc. So we think in order to learn more about the condition we need to set up a large well characterized cohort mm -hmm. and collecting a lot of clinical information and the biological data. So, so how many patients did this um, registry involve? Yes, yeah, so we now have over 700 um, or so patients now. Mm -hmm. So um, so this particular paper we were you know, doing a study about a year ago when we have about 630 patients. Right. And, and what was the uh, key aim of this specific paper? Yes, so um, Recently, the uh, ULAR, Shogun uh, Syndrome Study Group, has developed some standardised outcome measure to assess a patient with primary Shogun Syndrome, which is now in wide um, clinical use, um, both in clinical practice and clinical trial. And at the same time, there's now a lot of new treatment being developed for patients with Shogun. And of course, it is important to evaluate the health economic impact of any new treatment. And generally speaking, you know, one of the measures that people use are health-related um, quality of life measures, such as the EQ5D. So I think it is important to actually look at the relationship between these standardised disease outcome measure mm -hmm. and these kind of health economic um, instrument that we can as assess the, the health economic impact of any treatment being developed. Mm -hmm. So there are several um, disease specific outcomes in, in Shogun's, the, the SDI and the ESPRI. And um, in, this, in this study, what were your uh, key findings? Well, our key finding is that actually all three standardised disease outcome measures correlated reasonably well um, mm -hmm. with the um, EQ5D, although not perfectly. Um, but, you know, it is, it is a good correlation and which are statistically significant. So we think actually the disease-specific um, outcome measure developed by EULA really are quite good instrument um, mm -hmm. that has been developed. Mm -hmm. So uh, did any of these results surprise you? Um, not really in, in, some, in some way because I think the um, ESPRI, which is a, a, a patient um, reported symptoms, correlated the best, which is you know, kind of what we expected. Whereas the um, clinician biological measurement of the uh, STI correlated not as well, but it, even though it's still also um, correlated reasonably well. Um, slight uh, surprise finding is that out of all these domains within mm -hmm. the STI, the biological domain surprisingly um, correlated with a better outcome. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know how to explain the finding at the moment, but um, certainly one possibility is that these people being having more biological abnormality at the beginning may have an earlier diagnosis and therefore may be receiving better care. Right, right. And, and, and did that also correlate with disease dura or symptom duration, for example? Or? No, it, it yeah. isn't, actually. It isn't. So yeah. it's certainly in an area that we need right. to further study. Okay. And this, was a, um, this is an inception cohort, isn't it? No, this is oh, not. Oh. This isn't an inception cohort, but it is uh, uh, one of the characteristics about our cohort is that it's actually collecting from a, a large uh, number of centres, over 30 centres across the UK. Um, but we are intending to do a longitudinal follow-on this right, study. Right. The data are still, um, you know, being collected right, at the right, moment. Right, right. All right. So um, coming back to the original point, and mm -hmm. um, you wanted to kind of investigate whether this uh, had any consequences mm -hmm. for a clinical practice or, or maybe the research agenda. Mm -hmm. So are there any kind of uh, take-home messages mm -hmm. from this study? Yes, the way that we interpret the finding, there are uh, two main messages. First of all, I think the validating the ULAR um, standardised outcome measure mm -hmm. that I think will encourage clinicians to use them um, routinely in the clinical practice and also in clinical trial. Um, but also we, we think that because of the imperfect correlation, there may be room for considering um, whether a shogun specific um, health-related quality of life measure may need to be considered, and certainly depending on the on, on, on the treatment being tested, that may be necessary in some cases. Right. 
All right, well, we're not going to do, disclose all the details of the paper, and we uh, highly encourage you to read this paper once it's, once it's in the press. So, uh, Professor Eng, uh, good luck with your research. We look forward to uh, further studies on this uh, registry, and uh, thank you very much for uh, coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jan.